Hello again guys, how is it going? It is Fakeo coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. Today I've got something special for you guys. I want to share with you 7 cool patch 1.7 decks that you can consider taking to your ranked games and finding quite a bit of success. Some of these are going to range from super competitive to some pretty cool concepts that do pick up some wins. But regardless, I'm happy to share some of these amazing decks, so let's get to it. The first deck I would like to share with you guys today is actually going to be BBG's uh, Turbo Deep deck. By now, I think a few people, a few players will be well aware of what this deck is. And if you're not, it's basically another take on Nautilus where instead of doing the whole Maokai package, we just throw in a few cards from PNZ to kind of speed up the process of going deep. And just doing some amazing things with like Lure of Depths and playing uh, Sea Monsters for more tempo. And then finishing the game a bit sooner. This deck allows you to pretty much focus more on Nautilus, less on anything else, drawing lots of cards, and it's super flexible and a really fun deck. And one of the parts I like about it the most is that it runs coral creatures. Uh, coral, coral, coral creatures. I think this deck is really cool. I think it's nice to see a different take on Nautilus. And I think Nautilus is going to be like one of those cards that towards the near future, as we start to get more sets, we're going to start to see some really uh, super interesting concepts alongside the deep package. So that's a really cool deck. Um, I will leave the deck code, link, etc. down into the description. So if you want to go play this deck yourself, I highly recommend it. Pick up this deck if you want to like play some bit different. Like this is probably the most different deck we have here today. So if you're looking for something completely fresh or a new archetype, this could be one for you. The next deck I would like to talk about today is actually going to be a little bit of an older concept, but it's been lurking around for a little bit, but I don't believe receives enough spotlights. I do think it's a really good deck. That's going to be Sudden's Teemo Elusive's deck or Elusive Burn if you prefer to title it. It's basically another spin on an Elusive deck that still runs the King Cow Wayfinder package, allowing you to actually rip out Teemos here and there. This is basically another Elusive deck that features the PNZ package in Get Excited and a Mystic Shot to end the opponent a bit sooner. It gives you kind of like an over the top finish where if you somehow manage to lose a board, you've still got some pretty insane damage from hand. Uh, pick up this deck if you're looking to play another spin on Elusives. And if you haven't tried this one out yet, I do highly recommend it. I believe this is probably the strongest like Ionia King Cow Wade Finder uh, Elusive deck right now. Next up on the list is a deck I've been sharing quite regularly on the channel. And that's one that I really do appreciate. And it's been a completely fresh archetype. And that is going to be a Noxus Bilgewater uh, Hyper Fizz deck that pretty much features all the elusive cards from these two regions and the ability to like end the game in some crazy combo specific style. Uh, this is a deck made by Faint HT, an uh, actual close friend of mine in the Runeterra community who um, spent quite a bit of time perfecting this archetype. And I think at this point now, it's a very, very well, it's well, it's well polished. That's for sure. Uh, basically, we use like a Zap Spray Fin, Slippery Wayfinder, Hubble Bear, Golden Narwhal, Fizz, like literally every elusive unit we can. And then we run like every sort of card that will buff up our units so we can might end the game through elusive power. As of recently, we've been using cards like Pick a Card to allow us to pretty much keep going and set up the combo and really end the opponent pretty quickly. Pick a Card makes a really great fit in this deck, especially with all the attune power we have, including the single copy of Bubble Bear here and there. Fizz is just an insane one drop in this deck with the amount of spells that we have to combo alongside it and protect it. As well as Draven is the other champion card providing us spinning axes for both pushing more damage and threatening the protection of Fizz. This deck is extremely fun and actually a player by the name of uh, I Am Nutter managed to climb from Platinum to Masters with this deck. So if that's no proof that this deck is a consideration for you to climb with, then I don't know what is. I think this deck's really cool and it was really it's really cool to see a uh, close to a player of mine managed to build a deck and actually find a lot of success with it. So pick up this deck if you want to play something really wacky, really wild, but still manages to punish and win some games. The next deck I would like to share today is going to be Jonas AF's Twisted Fate and GP deck. It's not a spin on the kind of aggro archetype, but this list is kind of like a... It's, it's, it's most similar to Swain and Twisted Fate, where it's a bit of a slow burn deck, and we do feature, you know, the Riptide Rexes, in the Captain Farron, pretty much every strong card from Bilgewater. And we're also running the Black Market Merchant and Pilfer Goods package to be super annoying. It's basically the shell of Swain Twist of Fate, except instead of running uh, Swain itself, we're still running all like the Death's Hand and Noxium Fervor. We just instead run more Riptide Rex and more Captain Farron to kind of end the game even quicker without having to worry about the setup too much. Still featuring the Ravenous Flock as more of a two of because this card is quite strong. I can see the, I can see the um, example of cutting this down to two. 
uh, without Swain. It's probably not as reasonable as a card to use, but still a very cool deck and he actually managed to climb a lot of LP with this list. I think, I believe on one day, Jonas AF managed to go 22 and three, which is absolutely bonkers. Pick up this deck if you're looking to play an aggressive deck that can just stall out games and have a huge late game bomb. It's another variant of a slow burn deck. And you can also consider this if you haven't got Swain and you maybe have GP and uh, Twisted Fate instead. Very, very strong deck. Probably one of the most competitive ones on this list. Definitely pick this deck up if you're looking to climb. The next deck I would like to talk about is actually going to be Nick Make Plays uh, Fizz TF deck. This is kind of like a lot of inspiration, I believe, from uh, when Faint HD started to popularize Fizz and aggro archetypes. And it's kind of a mixture between Swim's kind of OTK Fizz and that aggro deck by Faint. This is basically another take on the whole slippery wayfinder zap spray and build water package alongside, you know, Fizz, etc. Except this time we're dipping into Free Old to kind of get that Fury of the North, Starlight Seer, Omen Hawk, all the really strong cards from there, and the stole out the game even further, as well as running Twisted Fate and Salvage in this package. This is a bit more of a combo combo deck. I guess you could say it's a bit more close, I would say, to uh, the spectrum of uh, Swim's OTK Fizz. But it's just a bit more like, you know, less meme -y, I guess. It's definitely a competitive deck. I had seen Nick was finding quite a bit of success in it on stream. Definitely a bit of a fresher archetype as well. I think there might be still some tweaks to be made to make this list really cool. But I thought it was worthwhile sharing and definitely one you can consider if you want to try another spin on Fizz. Because this one can definitely be a lot more annoying uh, with Starlight Seer and Fury of the North. So yeah, that's going to be Nick Makes Plays, a Fizz and TF deck. Definitely a competitive deck and you should consider it. Next deck I will be sharing as well as the deck after it are going to be two decks made by Teal Red. This is going to be Teal Red's Spooky Demacia. Another deck that I have shared on this uh, YouTube channel before and found quite a bit of success with it. I think I ended up going 10 and 5 one day with this list. Uh, we've seen other variants starting to pop up as of more recently, but this is the oldest and most well-refined list I had seen. And it's basically going to be your shell of Bannerman, except minus Bannerman, and we are instead running Harrowing and Ruination. It's just a very powerful mid-range deck that can just fight for value towards the end of the game. And I, I really like the inclusion of uh, this triple Ruination, triple Harrowing deck, uh, because you can literally just like at some point in the game play Ruination, clear your opponent's board, then play Harrowing and win. It's very similar to the Darrowing Darius we had seen dominating the meta for quite some time. I think it's strictly because of the fact that Harrowing is super powerful. And like, it doesn't matter what deck you're running. I feel like we're, everyone's going to start running Harrowing in the Shadow Isles. So absolutely bonkers deck. Pick up this list if you're still interested in playing those mid-range Bannerman decks, but want to start finding a bit more consistency throughout the latter game. I think this one is a bit more tricky to pilot because you've got a few more decisions to make, but in the end, it's still all about playing stuff on curve, slapping your opponent in the face. And when things turn to poop, you just play Harrowing. And last but not least, we'll finish off with uh, another deck I have shared as of recently. That is going to be Till Red's uh, Spooky Ezreal. For similar reasons as we were doing with the uh, Spooky Demacia list, it's another deck that utilizes Harrowing in a more unique way than that one. This one basically allows us to play Ezreal alongside Shadow Isles, which is a pretty cool take on Ezreal. And then run cards like Rekindler and Harrowing just to bring back the Ezreal's towards the later half of the game and do some pretty wacky stuff with Chump Womp and the Puff Caps as we keep summoning uh, them back from Harrowing because we will get the uh, Mushrooms back from this as well. Running a couple of Teemos for the early game, which is quite cool. Gives us the ability to sometimes rekindle a Teemo back if we kind of run a bit dry. And this gives us alternate ways of uh, bringing back unique champions with a Rekindler. Most of the time you do want to bring back Ezreal with the Rekindler, but still provides quite a lot of fun for the early game. And every now and then you'll be placing some mushroom uh, puff caps in your opponent's deck. So why not run Teemo as well? And then we pretty much just run a whole bunch of removal. And I think one of the other cool inclusions here is Fading Memories, which counts as a targetable ability for Ezreal, as well as sometimes being able to get back multiple Rekindlers or sometimes even your opponent's units because you don't have to target specifically your own, which is really good. Uh, very cool list. P definitely pick up this list if you want to play a Control Shadow Isles deck that just runs a super consistent finisher if you can make it that far. You can basically start the game until you get to that. Thank you so much for watching guys. I know it's been a few days since I've uh, posted a video as of recently. Um, I actually did a 12 hour stream and I've been quite a little bit busy up until then. So I do apologize for that. I'll be getting back onto track 
Um, but if you enjoyed this video and if you think that I may have uh, missed out on any cool decks that you have seen as of recently, be sure to let me know in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you are new here for some more very cool Rune Terror decks, etc. You guys have a fantastic day. My name is Fake Hero. You guys have been awesome. I will see you soon.